I found it kind of comical that he said his mom and dad also have a small group and they drink a little more wine than his small group did. <laughs> but it's oh, beautiful. It's, so it's like a generation building on a generation. And I'm thinking, yep, Alex, you're going to get married. You're going to have some kids and your generation yet unknown is going to serve the Lord. It's, it's an awesome promise of God. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Reach More podcast. My name is Mari Pablo, and I'm so excited to talk to you today about our previous interview with Alex Bettinghaus. I just love his excitement and his openness to share the ways that the Lord was working and continues to work through his small group. In order to talk a little bit more about this, I want to welcome my co-host, Josh, to join us. What's up, Mari? How's it going, Josh? Going good, going good. Yeah, let's talk about our interview with Alex. Yeah, you knew him before I did. So he was he was probably the third person I met in Wisconsin and he really? loves the Lord. Yeah. That's awesome. When mm-hmm. he started saying the thing of um I can ride anything in wheels, I was I was like I wonder how serious he is about that. He said he could ride a unicycle, which is awesome. Yeah, I wonder if he can skateboard and do all that. Does he do that? The answer is yes, yes, and yes. He he's incredibly humble athlete. He actually works for Trek, and he'll often fly overseas to train with guys that are, like bike for the Tour de France and stuff to help him test new what? gear. Yeah, it, he's a little humble about it, but he's an incredible athlete. Even more humble That's man awesome. of God, like uh, just a okay, good man. Good. So it, it's it was so fun to to hear him talk a little bit. That's awesome. What was something that really struck you from the interview? Um, Something that really struck me from the interview was how much the small group has poured into his life. His change of mindset from thinking, maybe I'll just do this for one season of a small group and going out on a limb and giving to God the time. He said he really had to scrape the time out of his schedule to get the training, the training group training, and then start his small group. But then after that, he said, man, I, I've received so much. And that's just beautiful how the Lord fulfills his promise to us. He says it is better to give than to receive. Not that the Lord like flips a fast one on us. He's like, gotcha. But it's like, no, we were made to receive the goodness of the Lord. But if we hold everything too closely, we got no room for it. So we got to give stuff away. And then that empties our hearts to receive the goodness that the Lord wants to pour out on us. He literally said, and I and I quoted him. He said, "The small groups has poured into me, and that oftentimes yeah. things that he hears in the small group, he takes to prayer, and he like just kind of sits with it for a while." And I thought that was so powerful. Um, so I think sometimes when you lead a small group, you're like, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lead this right," and and you end up receiving so much. And it was very evident to me that this group specifically is so big on community. Like, I'm sorry, if I get engaged, the first thing I'm going to do is go see my family. Like, I'm not going to go to my small group. But like, <laughs> but like for them, it was evident that their small group is like they're that close, like familial and encouraging. And this the sense of community that they have has been really cool to to witness. And it's very evident with the way that he speaks about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did think it was interesting, though, because this apostolate is a little different. Right. Because most times you get trained and I loved hearing his like recap from the training like six years ago. Um, You get trained and then you go out and you're supposed to invite people. In this case, the parish asked you people in the parish, hey, do you guys want to join a small group? And then it was kind of so it was like a mixture of apostolate and ministry. Um, Yeah. One, what are your thoughts on that? And two, it started off that way. And then it continued as a full apostolate because he continued to do this like kind of separate from the the parish, huh? Yeah. You know, my takeaway is like classic. Just do it. Yeah. Like regardless of if the parish, you know, publicizes a small group launch or your campus ministry publicizes a small group launch or there's just a rumbling in your in your belly, a, con- a conviction from the Lord that I need to do something for the folks in my life to lead them to encounter Jesus or to establish them more deeply in Jesus. Like whatever it is, just do it. I I feel like we can overthink a lot about this. Like what's the best way? And, And there's a time for strategy, right? But at the end of the day, 
the Lord loves it when we when we make a choice, we say yes to him and we begin to step out in faith in our apostolate. So that's mm-hmm. that's what I loved about about Alex there and his um and he was so his small group which was started by the cathedral parish, but mm-hmm. he took full ownership of it. That was very 100%. obvious. 100%. Yeah. I mean, it's been going on for how many years now? 6. 2018 Six years? was the training group, yeah. Wow, that's wild. It is it is awesome. Yeah, and the fruit is beautiful too. Um he shared so he shared a couple people in his um, small group have gotten married through this season of their life. Some of them have kids now. Um, I remember hearing about one guy in his tri- in his small group that went on to start a um, a monthly um, couples potluck at their house, um, and another guy that started his own small group. And then and then he talked about how the guys have begin to do some stuff together, some spiritual exercises. And the ladies have done some spiritual yeah, exercises as that. well, he's really that. organically too. So I just, yeah. I just love that. It's like life begets life, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What and did like you think you about thing? You want to grow in it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask, what did you think about his choice of content or the group's choice of content for their small group? Yeah. I think when you're dealing with something like a small group that is going on for six years, you know, I think there should be every six months, like a revamp of what do we want to do for the next six months? Like, what does that look like? You know, you could do the same thing every single time. I mean, you could always, you know, dissect and see how our Sunday readings like dive in. That's a like classic and it's never going to fail because it's scripture and it's awesome. Oh, the word of God is unpredictable yeah. and power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a hundred percent. You can do that a hundred percent. But I also like that he was very open and it seems the way that he was speaking, it seems that they had like a little meeting every so often. It was like, what do we want to do next, guys? You know, uh, so I like that they kind of switched it up. Like sometimes they were reading papal encyclicals like, all right, do that, you know, uh, and sometimes mm-hmm. they're reading books. I laughed. We've talked about this. I love Jack Philippe. Love I think the thing Jack that I like Philippe. most about Jack Philippe is that he's really deep, but also his books are very small. Um, and I laughed when he was like, we tried bigger books, but they just weren't <laughs> just, just too much. And I was like, dude, I get that, you know? Um, but I love that they did times that they were just diving into Jack Philippe books, these little books that are just packed with content. Um, and I, I and think we hear that a lot in small that. groups that people use Jacques Philippe books. So Not, for folks that aren't familiar with Jacques Philippe, his books, his booklets are usually less than a hundred pages and they're about, they're about the fundamentals, like how to encounter the Lord daily, how to be open to the Holy Spirit, making time for God. It's, it's about the really concrete stuff of the father's love and his desire to be your father yeah. and for you to live as his beloved son or daughter. And I think that he might be also, one of the reasons why they're always being used in small groups. Yeah, he also tricks you because you think like, oh, it's like a little pamphlet. Like, this is not going to do much. You know what I mean? So you're like, oh, I'll do that. Like, it's going to be an elementary <laughs> book. And then you start reading. And you're like, oh, shoot. Like, I can I could pray with this one page for multiple days. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. I always laugh. I think I've said this before. Uh, Jock Philippe came to my parish right before COVID and we thought we gave him COVID. Like, this is like like. Two days before the whole world <laughs> shut down, he was at my parish and my pastor had COVID. And for a second, we were like, did we just give Jacques Philippe COVID and is he going to be OK? But everyone, it's fine. He's fine. Um, but yeah, <laughs> he's, he's doing great. He's doing great. And it's awesome. And I think I think what I loved most about the content going back to that is they prayed about it and they made a decision together. Mm-hmm. And that's awesome. And they were very yeah. big on scripture. Yeah. Agreed. You had mentioned and, um, that, Josh. What were your thoughts on, on the scripture aspect? Well, I said a minute ago that scripture is unpredictable in power. And um, I, I'd i say, well, I don't have any, uh, sorry, I don't have any deep thoughts about scripture right now, other than you can't go That's wrong awesome. in your small group when you get into the word of God. I, um, just the other day I, I was, I was meeting with the team and I asked somebody to prepare some time of prayer and all he did was read the word of God. He said, we're going to read this slow. And then he asked a couple questions, man, the Lord was piercing our hearts with his word, just piercing our hearts with his word. 
So the word of God never fails. Every morning I get into the word of God, it's like nothing else fills me the same way. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah, I think the the two go to like material for small groups that I always tell people is like Sunday readings, classic. Or two, each person just takes turns bringing a passage that's speaking to them and why it's speaking to them. And then they come up with questions themselves that go with it. Mm -hmm. And it's so simple, but it's like always powerful because it's scripture and scripture is truth and it's going to pierce and it's going to speak no matter what. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's pretty wonderful. Yeah. What else struck you, Josh? Uh, At the end, I found it kind of comical that he said his mom and dad also have a small group and they drink a little more wine than his small group did. (laughs) but it's beautiful it's like a generation building on a generation and i'm thinking yep alex you're gonna get married you're gonna have some kids and your generation yet unknown is gonna serve the lord it's it's Mm -hmm. an awesome promise of god that is that is cool to think about my my my, i've mentioned this my mom's had the same small group for like 10 plus years or like 15 years and the, the ladies got together every tuesday you know and it's so fun to see that. And I think that it is cool to have like different realms, you know, different levels of yeah. small groups. It, it's course. kind of natural. It's like organic that your small group, your apostolate, once men and women start running with you, with King Jesus, they often become your mission community. But what Alex mentioned that I think was really healthy was like, it's, it's a lot of the same people, but they're open to adding one more and bringing mm-hmm. them into the community of believers. It reminds me of the church of acts where it says that those who are being saved were added to their number day by day. Mm -hmm. And so like when, if your body's not growing, it's dying. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I I love the, I love the organicness of it. I I don't think his large group is particularly, his small group is particularly large. I don't think it's more than, more than eight or a dozen folks. Yeah. It's a couple of couples and some single folks. Well, now they've got kids coming, so they might be pushing now. But it's it's a it's a relational time, yeah. and they know each other. That's for sure, mm. and they're committed to seeing each other across the finish line of heaven. Yeah, absolutely. There is one more thing that like struck me, and this is kind of off topic, but kind of on. He is an engineer. And there were multiple times throughout his explanation of things that you just saw how the Lord speaks to him through his engineer mindset. Does that make sense? Like, I laugh because when people are very analytical or when they're in a certain, I feel like the Lord speaks to you. Like, if you're really passionate or your gifts or whatever job you have, hopefully you're working in something that correlates with how you think and things that you love. And he's like an engineer. He was like, he would, he would literally kind of like precursor, like, I'm going to nerd out for a second, you know, and he would like go into things. I like, this yeah. is so funny because it, it, um, I almost felt like we were getting a snippet into his prayer life and into like the way that he is with the Lord and how he understands things in the, oh. in our faith, like with his engineer mindset. And, and yeah. I love that because it reminds me of like the Lord knows us and he knows how to help us understand things. And he knows how to like pursue our hearts and minds with the giftings and our interests and the things that make us us. Yes, I, that is a good point of of um, of trust in God that you bring up. That God will speak to us. He speaks to me in a language that I not only can hear but that I understand. Mm-hmm. And he, he is committed to teaching me his voice if I want to hear it. What a, what a good father. He, yeah, t- he talks to us in words we can understand and teaches us the sound of his voice. Mm-hmm. And, and we have to spend more time with him to know that it's his voice. Yeah, that's like, true. Like yep, it's, it's, yep, yep. it's like a, you know. He says, he way. says in, in John, uh, John 10, I think, or 11, he says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Lord, mm-hmm. Lord, I want to know your voice. I want to follow you. I hear your voice. That's a prayer of my heart. Been, been so for many years. That's been, I, I think I've mentioned this before. I've been mentioning this a lot. I've been thinking about this 
in my prayer life a lot. Like if if five people showed up and they all said they were Jesus, would I know the Lord enough that I would know who who he actually is? And I don't know the answer to that. I really hope so. Like I really, really hope so. But I keep thinking, this is so weird, but I keep thinking in my prayer time, like, I got to spend more time with you, Lord, because I need to know who out of the five you are. You know, like, I want to know you. Like, I want to yeah. know you so well that I'm I'm not yes. going to doubt. And, like, I know who, who is you, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So. Yes. Lord, Lord, we ask that you would, that you would teach us your voice. Yeah. Oh man, that's such a good prayer. Lord, teach me your voice. I want to know your voice, not the voice of the hirelings of the of the people who just s- speak the gospel because they they get paid for it or they're in it for their own gain or something, but we'll but we'll leave the flock when the wolves come. Like I want to hear the voice of the shepherd yeah. who lays down his life for the sheep. There's a different tenor to the voice of a good shepherd. There's a different mm-hmm. tenor to a man who will lay down his life for me. You can, mm-hmm. you can hear it. Lord, I want you to teach it to us. Yep. Teach us your voice, Lord. Ah, and praying that's a, to the Holy that's a good Spirit prayer. to like help us do that, right? Like, I just had my birthday. It's my Holy Spirit year, Pentecost year. Pentecost, got it? Like five? Okay, great. Three, two. Oh, I get awesome. it. 35. Do you get it now? Okay, thank you. Um, I <laughs> I'll totally save it for 50. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I, I'm doing that probably for 52, but... Um, like 50 also, but, um, Mm -hmm. I, I, it starts as a joke and every year since 33, I've been picking these themes and I throw parties and we go super extra with it, but it has been something of like, the Lord really has been working through these themes. And this year, I think a part of that is like, Lord, I want to dive into the Holy spirit more and just doss out to the spirit so that he can teach me how to pray and he can help me to recognize the voice. So all listening, just an invitation to ask for the guidance of the Holy Spirit to come upon us and to help us to hear his voice. Yes. Amen. Can I close this with prayer? Yes, please. This is my favorite prayer. Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, I invite you. Holy Spirit, I expect you. Father, I want to know you. I want to hear your voice. And I want to follow you. Amen. Amen. The Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Join us to reach more. You can begin today by downloading the Evangelical Catholic app and using the Define, Plan, and Act tool to discern your apostolate. Please support the Reach More mission each month with a monthly donation. And join us next time for another episode of the Reach More podcast.